So as I'm studying the Bible, and I love God's Word, I'm starting in Ephesians, and Paul is writing a letter to the Ephesians and praying for them, and he's very glad and giving thanks and remembering them in his prayers. So the first part of Ephesians is the thanksgiving and prayer. And it's all very, very deep, Ephesians, and it's, it's very good. There's so much in Ephesians. There's so much in the whole Bible. It's incredible. So Ephesians 2, I would encourage you, of course, to read the Thanksgiving and prayer in the opening letter. But made alive in Christ is, is really hitting me also. As for you... You were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, when I followed the ways of this world. I try to put myself in the situation and in the letter so I can take it very personally. And of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, which is Satan, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. So before I was a Christian, I gratified everything in my sinful nature. And when I was born again in 1999, that all changed and I gave my whole life, heart and soul to the Lord. One thing I hadn't given him up until that point, I think, was, was money. For some reason, money and making it was so important to me. And once I had turned that over, I really, really felt the Lord descend upon me. And of course, asking Jesus to come into my heart, fully take over my life and fill me with his Holy Spirit. So, and following its desires and thoughts like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, Jesus, God, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. That itself made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. That's incredible. It is by grace you, I, have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and sealed us with him in the heavenly realms. So we are not of this world. We are not to be of this world. Yes, we are in the flesh, but we are in the heavenly realms with Christ. That is so huge. In Christ Jesus verse 7, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. Incomparable riches. Wow. Expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you, I, have been saved through faith and not, and this not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We have to really, really press into God's word because we are in dark times. We are in dark days. And I pray right now for all of the saints hearing this, reading this. Lord, Father, just lift everybody up. Pour out your spirit like you never have before. Have mercy, have mercy on our nation. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would heal our land. I pray that there would be an awakening and a huge separation of those who are not of this world. I pray that you come quickly, of course, Lord, because we are in some dark times. But I pray more than anything, that you just keep, keep anointing and saving 
the people that you want with you, Father, at the end, because we love you so much. And we ask, Lord Jesus, First John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness right then and there. You know, I have to go before you and I confess, you know, my anger, my bitterness at times, my impatience at times, my unwillingness and stubbornness at times. And Father, I need you more and more and more and more and more. So, Lord, I just pray that your word will come alive to people, that you would just rule and reign in our hearts always. May we always be thinking of you. May we always be asking you and looking to your word as to what to do, where to go, how to do it. Father, I pray these things for now. I'm going to meditate more on this scripture because there's a lot in it. And I'm going to read it again. But to everybody out there, take the Bible a little bit at a time. Because if you take too much in, it'll all be too confusing. Because there's a lot to it. So just be patient. You don't have to read the whole book in a day. Just take a little bit at a time. All right. God bless you, people.